Welcome to Isina Mova Tutoring, and I'm your tutor for this lesson. Today, we're going to be looking at organic chemistry. Okay, so organic chemistry is mainly a study of carbon. And so carbon is our main focus, and carbon is very important in so many ways, and we've learned in previous grades. Carbon has four valence electrons, and it bonds covalently. And therefore, it's surrounded by four bonds. Now, let's look at that first structure we have on our left-hand side, carbon number one. And as we can see, it's surrounded by four bonds, as well as carbon number two. It's going to be surrounded by four bonds. And the bond in the middle, which is between carbon one and carbon two, will be shared by both carbons. So I'll still include it as part of carbon number two's bonds. So always make sure that your carbon is surrounded by four bonds. And now with structure number two, we can see here we have a double bond between carbon atoms. But you can still see that with carbon number one, it's surrounded by four bonds. As well as carbon number two, surrounded by four bonds. And so remember that both carbons will share this double bond. So in that way they'll be surrounded by four bonds. And that's exactly how it works. So these compounds we talk about are quite numerous, but are classified according to their families. So each compound has a family it belongs to. And the term we use instead of the word family is homologous series. So when you spot a compound's characteristics, you'll know to which family it belongs to or to which homologous series it belongs to. So these unique characteristics which you use to spot the compound are referred to as a functional group. So the homologous series is a series of organic compounds that can be described by the same general formula. Now I've highlighted the word or the term general, general formula, but I'm still gonna touch on it. Now I haven't given the definition for functional group, but when you describe it, a group of atoms that determines the physical and chemical properties of a group of organic compound, compounds. Now I've highlighted the word or the term general formula, but I'm still going to touch on it. Now the definition for functional group is not over here, but when you describe it, it's a group of atoms that determine the physical and chemical properties of a group of organic compounds. So let me try and make a quick example to bring light to what I'm saying. Now let's say since I'm Peter, my surname is Peterson, and I come from the Peterson family. And so Peterson would be the homologous series, okay? So now let's say you bump into a Peterson without them introducing themselves to you, and you notice that this person's got big eyes, and this happens to be a common resemblance amongst the Petersons. So what you'll say is, I notice this common resemblance or characteristic, and then you straight away that this is a Peterson. So in that way, the big eyes are the functional group, and then Peterson is the homo is the homologous series. So the characteristic that you spot in a compound is referred to as the functional group, and you conclude with the homologous series. Now, general formula. So this is a formula that can be used to, used to determine the molecular formula of any member in a, in a homologous series. Now, if you can remember in maths, we had a general formula. We had a general formula, and it represented a solution anywhere. And it wasn't specific, hence the word general. So same thing applies here. It's a formula that represents all compounds in that homologous series. Okay, so let's assume 
I'm talking about alcohols, the general formula would be representing all alcohols. Or if I'm talking about alkenes, it's going to represent all the alkenes. But you're still going to see the example I'm trying to make. So the homologous series I'm going to touch on will be nine. So that's nine families. And here we have alkanes, alkenes, alkynes, haloalkanes, alcohols, aldehydes, ketones carboxylic acids and lastly esters so these are the homologous series we're gonna touch on the first three homologous series which are alkanes alkenes and alkynes these organic compounds have a specific term they refer to they are known as hydrocarbons and that's not to mean hydrocarbons is a homologous series. Homologous series are alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. Do not get confused. But this trio is hydrocarbons, like I've said. Now, if you take a look at the word hydrocarbons, you can tell that the word hydro stands for hydrogen, and carbons is just carbons, which means these compounds that are known as hydrocarbons, which are alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes, contain hydrogen and carbon atoms only, and hence the name hydrocarbons. So when you define hydrocarbons, you'll define them as organic compounds that consist of hydrogen and carbon atoms only. For instance, you're not going to find O in your alkanes, O for oxygen, and this is because, like we've said, because they contain, because your alkanes contain hydrogen and carbon atoms only. Now, I hope you understand me, because this is very important to know. Now, we're about to take a very long trip, so please stay with me. So I'll start with the first three. And now we're looking at our homolog homologous series. We have alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. So we're going to jot it down or write it down as it looks on the screen. So we have alkanes on our left-hand side. And in the middle, we have alkenes. And on our right-hand side, we have alkynes. So alkanes are said to be saturated hydrocarbons. And alkenes are said to be unsaturated hydrocarbons, as well as alkynes. They are unsaturated hydrocarbons, but they just a little more unsaturated than alkenes. When we say something is saturated, we mean to say it's got a single bond between carbon atoms. And when we say it's unsaturated, we mean to say it's got double bonds between carbon atoms or triple bonds between carbon atoms, like in the case of alkynes. So that's how you'd identify alkanes, like the structure I'm drawing over here. So same thing applies with alkenes, where there's a double bond between the carbon atoms, and that's how we know it's unsaturated. And then our third one is alkynes where there's a triple bond between the carbon atoms. And these are functional groups, or these are structures that represent functional groups of alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. Now back to the general formula. And like I've asked you to write these hydrocarbons from left to right, alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes, the general, the general formula will be CNH2N, on your left hand side and CNH2N in the middle and CNH2N on your right hand side and going back to your left hand side you add 2 like I've written here and minus by 2 to your right uh, under alkynes so the general formula for alkanes will be CNH2N plus 2 
and for your alkenes, it will be CNH2N, and then with alkynes, it will be CNH2N minus 2. And that's how the general formula applies here. But you have to know how the general formula works. You will still find it in multiple choice questions and even long questions. It definitely could be very useful. So, so in the general formula, C stands for carbon. So C is carbon atom and H is hydrogen atom. And then N stands for number of carbons or carbon atoms. So this is where you substitute. For example, you have a structure with eight carbons and you are trying to find out how many hydrogen atoms there are since you have eight carbon atoms. So there's no reason for you to count or even draw a structure to count. That's unnecessary. If your compound is an alkane, you'll take the number of carbons, which is eight in this case, and substitute accordingly in your general formula. And when I say accordingly, according to the general formula for the alkanes. And that's how you'll get your final answer. And in that way, you'll know that your structure has eight carbon atoms and 18 hydrogen atoms if we're working with alkanes. I really hope that makes sense. So here's a quick example. So here we have C2H6. This could be given to you in multiple choice questions to know whether it's alkanes, alkenes, or alkynes. And your job is to check how many number of atoms your C or carbon has. And in this case, we have two. So what I will do is say two times two and replace the end with two. And two times two gives us four. And then ask myself, how do they get to six? And then a bell rings, they've added two. They've added that two to get to six and therefore it's an alkane according to our formula, CNH2N plus 2. I don't know if you, if you can still spot this, sorry. So the following example, I didn't do it like the previous one. What I noticed is that they gave us C3H6. So this is what you'll do, is multiply that 3 by 2 and get 6. And as you can see, we have 6. And because I didn't add or minus 2, this simply means... It's an alkene. And here's another example. We have C4H6. We take that four, our number of carbons, and multiply it by two. And this gives us eight. And to get to six, when you have eight, you minus by two. And so in this case, it's an alkyne. This will be helpful in multiple choice questions. Please make sure you understand this. So here they drew a structure for us. Now, when they ask me to write a molecular formula, now a molecular formula indicates how many, how many atoms of carbon and how many atoms of hydrogen the structure has. As you can see, the hydrogen and carbon atoms. So what you and I will do is to simply count the number of carbon atoms we have. And yeah, we have eight carbon atoms. And the structure has single bonds between these carbon atoms, which means it's an alkane. So that 8, I'll times by 2, or multiply by 2, according to our formula. And then add by 2, which will give us C8H18. And we got to 18 because 2N, 2 times 8, which gives us 16. And you plus about 2 and get 18. These organic compounds can be represented in various ways. They could represent them in a structural formula, condensed structural formula, or molecular formula. When we talk about the structural formula, it's a formula that shows which atoms are attached to which within the molecule. So the structural formula shows every detail with regards to atoms and bonds, and the condensed structural formula does not show every detail. So the definition for this formula reads, the notation showing the way in which atoms are bonded together in the molecule, but does not show all bond lines, which can simply mean 
it does show how many carbon atoms it has as well as hydrogen atoms it has. However, it doesn't show bond lines as we see above in our structural formula. So remember the word condensed. So let's look at our structural formula to make a condensed version of the formula. So I'll start with carbon number one on the left hand side, which has three hydrogen atoms and that will give us CH3. Carbon number two has two hydrogen atoms and that will give us CH2. The third one has two H atoms and then again CH2. The fourth one has two H atoms and then again that's CH2. And then we'll continue like that to the eighth carbon which has three H atoms and so it's going to be like the first one. It's going to be CH3. So this is the condensed structural formula. I'm sure you can tell the difference between a structural formula and a condensed structural formula. The condensed does not show you bond lines, whereas the structural does show you bond lines. And now the molecular formula, let's read the definition. A, chemi a chemical formula that indicates the type of atoms and the correct number of each in a molecule which would simply mean since there are eight C atoms on our structure on our structure on our structural formula as you see above this would be C8 and 18 H atoms this would be H18 so this will be C8 H18 and that's our molecular formula. So you have to know the difference between structural formula, condensed structural formula, and molecular formula.